We're ending this introductory series on understanding Israel with God's Word for the now, especially to Gentile believers. In the last session, we shared that our current context is the Psalms 102 verse 13, set time of Israel's favour. And because of that, God is setting watchmen on the walls of Jerusalem. He is raising up unprecedented prayer for Israel to cover her in her coming time of greatest distress and persecution. It is also in light of this coming time of Jacob's trouble that God is also issuing His word for the now, especially to us in the Gentile Church. His word for the now comes from Isaiah 42, 23 and says, Who among you will give ear to this? And who will listen and hear for the time to come? This is the Isaiah 42, 23 divine summons. Now, what is this summons all about? A summons is actually something that is serious and urgent. So Isaiah 42, 23 is God's serious and urgent call to His people to take time to give ear, to listen and to hear His heart for Israel. The this and the time to come in verse 23 refer to what is found in verses 21, 22, 24 and 25 which have to do with Israel and with God's heart for her. There is a triple emphasis to this summons to know, to understand and to partner. Firstly, God is calling us to know with clarity His narrative for Israel and the end times because there will be alternative narratives being trumpeted forth both by the secular world and even some parts of the body of Christ. We also need to know our role as the Gentile Church according to Scripture and how we are to stand with Israel. The second emphasis is to understand. What is it that we need to understand? We need to understand God's heart and plan for the nation of Israel. This can be found in many places in Scripture such as Ezekiel 39, 23-29, Joel 3, 1-3, Zechariah 14 and Romans 9 to 11. Some of these verses we have actually covered uh, in this series. Specifically in the verses surrounding the Isaiah 42 23 divine summons, God wants us to develop understanding in the following. Verse 21, which is God's heart pertaining to his narrative for Israel and for human history. Verse 22, which reveals what will happen to Israel just before Jesus returns. And verses 24 to 25, which reveal that it is God who engineered this end-time narrative and He also gives His reason for doing so in these verses. So He is summoning us to develop this very understanding of His heart from His scripture. The last and third emphasis of this summons is partnership with God in a threefold call to stand with Israel. The first is to stand with Israel in prayer, which we talked about in the last session. Developing understanding of God's heart for Israel is unto an alignment with Him so that we won't be offended when we see His end-time plans taking place and so that we can arise to stand on the walls of Jerusalem to pray for Israel. The second of this threefold call is to demonstrate and reveal the mercy of the God of Israel to Israel. We talked about this briefly in session 16 regarding the Isaiah 19 vortex where believers in Egypt and Assyria, meaning the Arab and Middle Eastern nations, will arise to even show the very mercy of God uh, by sheltering, by protecting Israel in her time of greatest need. The third aspect of this threefold call is preparing Israel for her call in the Millennial Kingdom. You know, as God brings Israel through the fire to produce gratitude and humility in her, He's calling us to partner with Him. While much of this partnership will be through prayer and through blessing her, He's also summoning us to prepare to be His voices. Which brings us to the next question. What is this Isaiah 42, 23 divine summons unto? It is actually a summons unto a season of preparation to become the Isaiah 6 and Isaiah 40 voices. And it begins with giving ear to Him and listening to His heart. Isaiah 6 and Isaiah 40 actually point to God's heart for voices to arise and speak to the Jewish people. There are two main things that these voices will speak. The first is comfort. Isaiah 40 talks about voices that will arise to speak comfort to the nation of Israel. These voices will, in the time of Israel's greatest trouble, comfort her by showing the mercy of God to her while everyone else is against her. In fact, verse 1 of Isaiah 40 says, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God, and speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her. They will also prophetically proclaim that her warfare is about to end in the midst of her most intense persecution 
and also speak forth prophetically her very destiny as God's beloved and also the ultimate plan that He has for her as His holy nation. There are so many scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, that talk about the fullness of Israel and God is calling us to prophetically declare these over her. The second is to speak about God's plan for Israel to Israel. This includes warning her of the severe judgment that is coming, but also making sense of why God is allowing it and orchestrating it, which is in order to refine her to become the holy seed. We see this in Isaiah 6 verse 13. Actually, Isaiah 6 is a familiar passage of scripture which many of us may have personalized and used to respond to God with. Here I am, send me, we tell the Lord. But we may not have realized that Isaiah's response to God here specifically pertains to speaking to Israel about her coming judgment, but also the redemptive purpose of what God is going to do. This is the actual context of what Isaiah 6 is about. So it's these voices that God is raising up in this hour to warn Israel of what is to come and also to make sense of why. In light of this, God is summoning us, especially the Gentile believers, to this time of preparation to become His voice. It is a call to everyone and not just to those in the Middle East, even though it is especially the Middle Eastern believers who will be in the centre of this Isaiah 19 vortex. Uh, this call is also not just a call to ministers or full-time missionaries. It does not mean that we will have a big platform or that we have to move to Israel or the Middle East, but it is about preparing ourselves so that when the time comes, God can commission us and use us as His vessels to speak in whatever circumstance or situation may arise. For us who say yes, God will prepare us like He did Isaiah, just like how Isaiah encountered God. The Lord will give us encounters with Him so that we will be overwhelmed by who He is, which will then empower us to speak boldly and courageously. And just like how Isaiah was purified, Scripture says that his iniquity was taken away and his sin was purged. God will also sanctify and purify us in our hearts and speech so that we will be his holy vessels and his voice. Just like how Isaiah was commissioned, the Lord will also commission us to speak forth his very message and heart regarding the nation of Israel. So God's word to each and every one of us for the now really is this. Will you give ear to this and will you listen and hear for the time to come? May we embrace and respond to his summons in this critical hour to arise as his watchmen on the walls for Jerusalem and as his voices. We've come to the end of this series on understanding Israel. We pray that this series has given you a basic understanding of Israel as it pertains to God's heart and biblical storyline and also highlighted the importance of Israel as a nation for our time so that many of us will respond by aligning with God and arising to pray for her and also preparing ourselves to stand with her. Indeed, through the course of this series, we have seen two momentous events regarding Israel. The first is the 21-day Isaiah 62 fast in May of last year, 2023, followed by the October 7th Hamas attacks just five months later. Both are really unprecedented events which have brought Israel to greater prominence both in the body of Christ and also on the world political stage. Surely the intensity of warfare surrounding Israel both in the spiritual and natural realms is increasing. It is in the midst of this increasing intensity that God is raising up the Ruths and the Esthers to be in that place of prayer for her and also the Cory Ten Booms and the Dietrich Bonhoeffers who will arise to show mercy and shelter the Jewish people even at the cost of their own lives. And as God is raising up these ones in our generation, we need to remember that it is not by our own power or our own might, but by His very Holy Spirit that is going to enable many to arise to step into this very call uh, that He has for us. We'd like to exhort you to embrace and respond to this summons for the now. We pray that as you go deeper in wrestling for understanding of God's heart for Israel, that the Lord would even reveal His very heart to you, would grant you revelation and deeper understanding of His heart, especially from scriptures such as Romans 9-11, to uh, Daniel 9-12, to and Zechariah 12-14. to We also encourage you to allow God to place His zeal and burden for Israel on your heart and allow Him to prepare and lead you in whatever way He wants uh, for you to bless Israel, to pray for her or to stand with her. 
We will end with this. In 2017, a seven-year travelling exhibition on the Holocaust actually began making its way um, to cities around the world. The title of this exhibition is extremely prophetic and very uncanny for us who are aware of what is going to happen to Israel um, in the coming decades. The title of this exhibition is I'll Switched Not Long Ago, Not Far Away. And if we understand God's uh, biblical end time narrative and also his end time plan for Israel, we know that truly what happened to her in World War II, which was not long ago, is actually not very far away in the future. And we pray that as you continue to seek God's heart regarding this and search the scriptures, that your heart would also be uh, united uh, with the Lord for Israel and that you would arise as the very watchmen and the very voices uh, for Israel, even in this very generation. God bless.